recreating this AI slope and turning it into an actual playable game. I was doing my hourly social media research when I saw a XIT that caught my attention. It was yet another AI tool that makes fully playable games in your place, ignoring the cropped out instructions, all the assets that were used, and the fact that the video conveniently cuts out right before colliding against an obstacle. I was planning on porting Kenny's latest holiday models to Sandbox, so why not use them to recreate it? Of course, remaking an AI game is not that impressive, the whole point is it takes them only hours to create it, so, just as Gary made Gmod on Christmas Day, I'll also take part in this imaginary game jam. The first thing I did was port over Kenny's holiday skit, I made some Python scripts to speed up the process, and within an hour, I had them all uploaded on Sandbox's cloud for everyone to use. I did have to manually set up collisions for a few models, but ModelDoc makes it very easy. Next up, I created the project called Christmasy Game and started work on the background cottages. My goal was 4 to 5 cottage prefabs that I could just randomly place in the map. I started off by just recreating the cabins shown in the Holiday Kids thumbnail, but after those were done, I tried freehanding it. And I was quickly reminded why I'm not allowed to make placeholder models anymore. So instead, I looked for cottage pictures as a reference, and I'd say those other ones came out pretty well. Now to place them in the scene, I had to first make one. Looking at the gameplay, it seems that the map itself is just a giant rotating cylinder. So using the mesh tools, I created a giant cylinder with a divot in the middle, representing the rod, then applied as no material from the cloud, and started work on a script to place the houses. The cylinder itself slightly speeds up over time as well. I would write down how many cottages I wanted to place, and as a cylinder from the side is just a circle, I'd divide 360 degrees by that number to get the angle in between each house. Then, if we defined a radius, we could loop over its slice and place our prefabs on top. I'll add some random offset too. And let's try it out. Turns out I was adding two rotations instead of multiplying, returning an invalid rotation, we parent the cottages to the cylinder, and uh, perfect. Oh, almost I guess, just some tweaks needed, alternate which side of the road it's placed on, and now it's perfect. Up next, I wanted to implement this effect that I saw on a PS2 billion Mandy game, it's pretty cool and looks simple enough, just duplicate our current map, offset the rotation and place it in the back, now the player will be able to see what's coming from the distance, something the original AI game didn't have. Now we can move on to the player, dressed up as Santa on a sled, because the model kit didn't come with a sleigh. Perhaps it was shot down by Iraqi missiles and now he has to collect all the scattered presents with a sled he stole. All we have to do is move the player from side to side, since the rotating map makes it look like you're moving already, it just needs to clamp Santa's position so he doesn't go off-road, and to make it look nice, I'll have him lean in when turning. For the presents, we modify the cottage placing code to place them in the road, and set up a trigger so that they get disabled when touched, and after half rotation of the map, they get re-enabled. Later on I'll have it randomize what gets placed on the road, but this will do for now. While I was at it, I also implemented jumping, so we can have different types of obstacles, and this time I'm not holding the player's hand, if they jump out of the road, it's a game over. For now the game over is just creating a copy of the player, hide the original game objects, apply physics to both Santa and the sled, then flinging them upwards. Since the ground isn't really being simulated, I give the cylinder a surface velocity, which makes it look like Santa is actually being left behind, only to fall off in the void. Forever. But that's fine because that was just a copy, remember? To restart the game we should simply re-enable the original. After that, I modified the gift's placing code to also spawn some short and tall rocks, then set up the trigger so that it would ragdoll the player. And now comes my favorite, totally not being sarcastic, part of game development. UI. I haven't actually done UI in a long time, I managed to avoid it for more than a year by offloading it to someone else on the team. Thank you guys. But now, there's no running away. And since I'm no designer, I copied the UI from the original by tracing it over in Photos Hop. It's actually been so long since I've done UI that for the first 15 minutes, I tried figuring out why it wouldn't display, only to find out I needed the screen panel component as well. Scoreboard down, with a nice wobbly gift too, then the instructions that disappear after a few seconds, and lastly, the only original piece of UI I've made, these buttons to restart or close the game. 
you probably would have noticed without me telling you. Christmas Day is over, and not only is the game on par with the original, I'd say it's got more features and looks better. I'm not done with it yet, I want to work on it some more before releasing it to the public, and the next day is still a holiday, so there's a lot we can do. First off, I'm gonna polish the scene, I reuse the cabin placement code, again, to spawn lamp posts near the road. Then I spent half an hour trying to find a good night skybox, then trying to make one myself, and in the end I settled with one on sandbox's cloud. Placed some cliffs in the distance, which are just rocks I scaled up, and added fog to obscure the background. I then lit up the lamp post by placing a small light underneath, which looks too good for how little impact it does to performance. It's starting to look good, but how does it sound? That's right, it doesn't. Lucky for us, Mangus just made a new piece of Christmas in music from another project of ours, so I just joined it for the game instead. I mean, listen to it. You can't get tired of this. For this LED, I edited a skiing sound so that it loops perfectly. The trick is to overlap the ending and the beginning, then slowly fade in between them. The sound is played constantly at a low volume, but becomes louder if you speed up or swerve. It's muted when you jump, but gets really loud for a moment once you land. After the sounds were done, I finished off the map by placing snow to cover the side of the road and peppered it with trees. Then I worked on some random decorations that were included in the Kenny's model kit and placed those in the scene as well. I shouldn't have to say this, but yes, I reused the cabin placement code for all of those as well. Now all that's left for visual is particles. A continuous stream of snow coming off of the back of this LED gets more powerful if you speed up and swerve, then two different snow impacts. One for landing after you jump, and one for when you hit an obstacle or fall off track. Lastly, a cool effect for when you pick up presents, combining a growing circle sprite with a few shooting stars for this one. And while I was at it, I made the gifts float away instead of disappearing instantly. The game is almost complete, all that's left is to randomize what gets spawned on the road, otherwise you'll always encounter the same obstacles and gifts. There's even a chance that no rock spawns on the side of the road, or at all, and you can just easily get infinite points. There's a problem though, currently we spawn every obstacle and gift on the main cylinder, then we clone it to create the background cylinder, this means that everything parented on it also gets duplicated. And that has worked perfectly for us so far, because we only had to do it once at the start. But now, if we want to move an obstacle or change it to something else, we need to do it for the background version of it as well, or else they're not gonna match. Imagine going 120 km per hour, you see a present approaching from the distance, but instead you're met with a rock. Anyways, I'm too lazy to figure out the transform math required to move the obstacles, so here's my proposal. Instead of placing obstacles and gifts, we place markers which won't get duplicated to the background, instead they are going to create and hold a reference to game objects that get cloned over in their place. When the background marker isn't pointing down anymore, it means it's about to get into view, and the main marker picks between an obstacle or a gift, spawns it, then clones it over to the background. When the main marker isn't pointing up anymore, then that means you can't see it, and clears whatever it spawned. Oh yeah, I also added a snowman obstacle somewhere along the line, I forgot when exactly. And we finally have our game, made more or less in a day. All that's left is to upload it for everyone to play. Just gotta take some screenshots for the page, make a thumbnail, which later I found out I misspelled the word, so now it's called Christmasy Game, implemented a few achievements and a leaderboard, and finally set the game to public. Well, that's it. If you'd like to play the game, you can find it in the description, together with the source code and our Discord server. And while I'd like to know how long it took the original Xeter to make that game using an AI assistant, we'll never find out because they deleted the Xit. Maybe due to backlash? We'll never know. But what we do know is that our is much better in every way. Thank you for watching our first devlog, and shout out to Kenny again for the model kit. I'll throw him in the description as well.